Welcome back to the Bison Information Network. I'm Logan Ginnerberg. We have tons of local and campus news for you this week, so stay tuned. In need of a laugh? Want to have a night to remember? The TBD Comedy Show is holding one of their famous improv comedy shows. The show is a perfect place to get some hearty laughs, excitement, and a good time all around. Bring yourself, your friends, enemies, family, whoever you choose to bring. It will be full of good vibes and great memories for sure. The comedy show will be held this Saturday at 8 in the Prairie Rose Room inside the Memorial Union. The Chelly Institute is holding their Human Progress and Flourishing Workshop once again this year, and the guest speaker for this week is Thomas Stratman, a law and economics professor from George Mason University. Stratman will talk about trade in America before Columbus before fast forwarding to highlight economic and legal institutions today and how they affect prosperity. If you or a friend is an econ major, interested in economics, or just want to gain some insight and wisdom on a new perspective or topic, the speech will be held this Friday at 10 a.m. in the Beckwith Recital Hall. The event is free to attend and is open to both students and the public. Curious about what NDSU has hidden on its campus? If so, the NDSU Research Facilities Bus Tour may be just the thing you're looking for. The bus tour will stop at several NDSU buildings and centers, showing students, entrepreneurs, and researchers alike the wonders and tools that may go unnoticed or unappreciated on campus. Some of these stops include the Del Rimpo Research Greenhouse, the Technology Incubator and Innovation Studio, and the Electron Microscopy Center. The bus will begin pickup at 9 a.m. on Monday outside the Memorial Union and be done around noon. Walk-ons are, are allowed, however, the tour is a first come, first serve, so make sure to RSVP if you are interested. Earlier this week, reporter Chris Dick went behind the scenes with the NDSU club hockey team. Let's take a look. We wouldn't have a team. The Bison men's club hockey team is gearing up for its next season and hoping to make it the start of something new. A lot of people don't even know there's a team at NDSU. When I first joined two years ago, um, we had a very senior heavy team, a lot of skill, we were, we were a really solid team. Um, we're really good now, we've just got a lot of young players, so we got a lot of time to build. Um, I'd say we're close to that level too. When I, when I joined, I didn't expect it to be much, I figured we were junior goals, you know, mid high school level, but it's, it's very, very fast paced, it's way higher than I expected. And, you know, it's, it's higher than most high school hockey, to be honest, and so. Played since I was a kid. Grew up in Cloncade, Minnesota, playing there. Uh, continued on, came here, kept playing hockey. Not a lot of guys came back. We had a lot of guys uh, leave, not make grades, graduate, whatever it was. So it kind of got passed on to a couple of freshmen to run this thing. And after struggling to keep the program going last year, this time they're back with the support of the university, more players trying out than ever before, and a new coach for the program. Well, my name is Mark Hendrickson, um, and I just recently took the position as head coach of the Bison Club men's hockey team. Um, originally grew up in Mora, Minnesota, known as Hockey Town USA. Um, spent my childhood there. I think my first time on skates, I was probably two years old, uh, started skating at two, played through the youth program um, in World, and then eventually my interest turned and I focused on golf, but I, I played through youth uh, in World, Minnesota. I think the biggest thing is, um, you know, I've been coaching over 20 years, and, and I think the biggest accomplishment I could name is um, the growth I've had as a coach, and. I attribute a lot of that growth to working with other coaches in communities of North Dakota and Minnesota, but more importantly, working from working with the kids. Excuse me, learning from the kids, and and that's that's helped me grow substantially in my coaching career. Um, as of lately, um, I coach the uh, junior gold program in Moorhead in the Moorhead system. And we've had a lot of success. Uh, I've coached three years in the program for junior gold, and we've had three state championships, so we've had a lot of success. And, and again, I attribute that to learning a lot from other coaches in the Moorhead program and, of course, from the kids. I asked each of them separately what their hopes for the team this year were, 
and they all had one thing in common. We said at the beginning of the year we'd like to make go to the national tournament, and I think we got the talent and work ethic to do it. So. For the future, I hope we promote this well. I hope we continue to develop. Hope we eventually can meet our goals and make a national tournament here. Uh, My expectation is to um, get to the national tournament, to be quite honest. And then once we get to the national tournament, we regroup. Um, we go into our 2.0 mode, as I call it, playoff mode. And um, I would venture to say with what I've seen on the ice this last month, uh, we could be contenders for a national title at the end of the year. I'm Christopher Dick, Ben News. Thank you, Chris. Now on to local news. The future of STEM is a little bit brighter today. North Dakota's Gateway to Science has announced it will be donating a $35,000 statewide grant as it aims to encourage the younger generation to get into STEM. Eligible recipients include K-12 districts, career and tech centers, and other entities that will impact K-12 education. Applicants will be reviewed for how engaged their students are in STEM activities. The grant will directly help at least three school districts, and all funds will be awarded March 1st. It has been a historic week in Minnesota sports as the Twins swept the Blue Jays 2-0 in the AL wildcard series, making it the first time in 21 years the ball club will advance in the playoffs. However, their next opponent is no joke as they will face off against the defending World Series champions in the Houston Astros. Game 1 of the best of 5 series kicks off in Houston on Saturday. Whether you're a diehard fan or have never watched a game, this is definitely the weekend to turn on the TV and tune in. Trouble in the White House as the Biden's dog commander has been removed from the White House after a series of biting incidents. The most recent attack was when commander bit a Secret Service agent while on the White House grounds last month. This marks the 11th known incident of commander biting White House or Secret Service personnel. As bad as the numbers sound, multiple sources have stated that more biting incidents went unreported, leaving many to wonder just how often these incidents took place. This high amount of attacks has some worried if possible lawsuits may be on the horizon for the Biden family and all involved. The Biden admin refused to comment on the concerns around these events. Major, the other Biden family dog, also had issues with Biden attacking staff and Secret Service. And just like Major, Commander has been sent to live with friends in Delaware. Coming up after the break, I will have your Bison Sports Report for this past week. Don't go anywhere. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. One heart to heart, one inside joke, 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. It's time. Become a big today. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need to show off your bison pride. The bookstore can have you sporting green and gold wherever you go. It offers many different brands, sizes, styles, and selection so that you find exactly what you're looking for. Shop the NDSU Bookstore and show your spirit today. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student an athlete and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. There are so many great things to experience at NDSU. It's hard to pick one, but my favorite is the people. They make it such a warm place. The Bison aren't just across the country, they're across the globe. It's the perfect distance from home. The faculty are our biggest cheerleaders. Hands-on research experience. The affordable tuition. All the opportunities to stay active on campus. Real world learning experiences. Once I got on campus, it felt like home.
Welcome back to the Bison Sports Report. Heading into homecoming week, the football team was riding high on their undefeated stretch, but it all fell apart this past weekend as the overlooked Coyotes would come into the Fargo Dome and spoil the homecoming festivities. The game was well over at halftime as the Bison had fallen behind 3-21, a rare sight, and were forced to play catch-up for the rest of the day. The Bison managed to put up 16 points in the second half, but it was not enough as South Dakota was able to cling to their slim lead, escaping with a 24-19 upset over the Dynasty Powerhouse. Quarterback Cam Miller was the Bison's lone bright spot as he tossed for 159 yards and a touchdown and added another 65 on the ground. Senior tight end Joe Stoffel was on the receiving end of Miller's lone passing touchdown to pair with four catches for 33 yards. The Bison will look to rebound this weekend as they finally hit the road to take on a struggling Missouri State team. The game can be watched on ESPN Plus or on the Bison Sports Network. The women's volleyball team was also busy this weekend, getting two home matchups over homecoming weekend. Starting off on Thursday, the Bison welcomed St. Thomas to the Benson Bunker Fieldhouse and then proceeded to humiliate them, shutting them out 3-0. The first two sets came easy to the Bison, winning by 3 and 10 points respectively, but the last set would be dragged out as the Bison needed to record 29 points to take the win. Allie Hinsey was the star of the show yet again for the Bison, recording 17 kills to go with 14 digs. And Alexis Bowling would join her atop the stat sheet with 12 kills to pair alongside four blocks. Fresh off their statement win, the Bison felt really good rolling into homecoming Saturday as they would host an Omaha team that had struggled in the early part of the season. But the past is the past, as Omaha would prove they were no slouch, getting out to a hot 2-0 start on the road. The Bison did manage to rebound from the deficit, but could not save the match as Omaha would take the final set, edging out the Bison in a five-set victory, spoiling homecoming for all in the crowd. Allie Hinsey once again was the best the Bison had to offer, recording 15 kills with 15 digs and 3 aces. Freshman Lauren Jance recorded her best performance with 15 kills, 2 aces and 6 digs. And Ariana Bloom had a good day with 10 kills, 4 blocks and 2 digs. The Bison will be active later tonight as they travel to Brookings to take on South Dakota State at 7 p.m. The game can be watched on the Summit League Network. With October well underway, the women's soccer team is ramping up the intensity on their final stretch of games for the regular season. They were busy this past week playing two road games in four days. The action kicked off in Brookings with the team traveling to take on the Jackrabbits last Thursday. The Bison fell behind quickly with Jaden and Carrillo recording an SDSU goal in the 17th minute. And that would be it as NDSU would fall 1-0 in a frustrating loss that saw three yellow cards to go with 15 penalties for the Bison as they were outshot badly. Olivia Watson contributed heavily to the offensive push for the Bison as she had three shots with one being on goal. And Loretta Wachek would have her lone shot of the day be on goal as well. After a disappointing offensive performance, the Bison looked to get back on track Sunday as they would head east to take on St. Thomas. And the game was extremely heated and got physical fast, with both teams still looking for their first win in Summit League play. Both teams were carded three times each, with the Bison's Jess Hanley getting red carded in the 60th minute. Despite all this intensity, it would not translate into goals, as the 19 total shots resulted in not a single goal for either team in a 0-0 tie. Goalie Abby Wilkinson was the best Bison on the field as she would record two saves and force a shutout tie. Alicia Need tried to get something going offensively for the Bison with all three of her shots being on goal. The Bison will look to jumpstart their offense this weekend in a pair of games as they play Oral Roberts tonight at 7 p.m. before heading to take on the University of North Dakota on Sunday. In cross-country news, both teams come off their week-long break refreshed and ready to participate in the Jimmy Invitational this Friday. The meet will be held in Jamestown, North Dakota, and will begin at 4 p.m. for the women and 4.40 for the men. Best of luck to both teams. In golf news, it was a quieter week in golf as the men's team was inactive this past week as they prepare for their next Invitational this upcoming Monday. The men will participate Monday and Tuesday in the Bill Cullum Invitational in Samus, California. Unlike the men, the women were active earlier this week as they competed in the Pat Lesser Harbottle Invitational. And it was another forgettable outing for the Bison as they took 16th out of 22 teams with a score of 43 over par as a team. Grand Canyon University would win the invite with a team score of only 2 over par. Elise Hoven continued her streak of leading the team with a strong third round to give her a total of 8 over par for the invite. Catherine Monty would take second for the team with 11 over par, and Leah Scar took third with 12 over par. 
The Bison as a whole had a great third round and will hope that momentum carries over as they head to their next invite, the Loyola Parkinson Family Invitational in Libertyville, Illinois. Well, that's all I have for a busy Bison Sports Week. With October fully underway, that means that cold days are on the near horizon. Henry, what can we expect to see in the next few days here in Fargo? Thanks, Logan. So for the next, for today at least, we're seeing a hot, we're seeing pretty overcast skies with a high of 50, well, with te current temperature being 55 degrees and a dew point of 43 degrees. We're looking, also looking at a humidity of 53 percent, with winds coming in from the northwest at 26 miles per hour, with gusts at around 35 miles per hour. Going to where hour by hour, as you can see, it's pretty stable across the time, mostly going overcast and partly cloudy, with a whopping 40 degrees at 6 a.m. It's going to be a cold one tomorrow. Looking at our sky cast, uh, our sunrise today was 7.31 a.m. with a sunset of 6.59 p.m. And in total, we had around 11 hours and 28 minutes of sun. And looking at our moon, we're currently in our third quarter. Our last full moon was on the 29th. Looking at today's almanac, today's high was a high of 56 and a low of 46. Average temps on this day in the past was a high of 50, 67, sorry, and a low of 42. Record temps on this day, in 1906 we had a high of 93, and in 1946 we had a low of 19. Going on the national temperatures, we're spring seeing pretty normal uh, fall-like temperatures up here in the north with some pretty unusual weathers down in the south and uh, going up towards the northeast. Uh, also rain, we have some rain coming in through North Dakota, a bit of central Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, as well as a lot in the northeast. Going into our seven day forecast, uh, we're looking at pretty cool weekend. We're looking at mid 50s all around with a low in the 30s with that flow of 32 on Saturday. Going to our full seven day forecast, we have a pretty even week across the board with highs in the mid 50s consistently, but lows dipping into the 30s and uh, 27 on Tuesday. So better start thinking about a coat, NDSU. Well, anyways, that's all for my forecast. Thank you. Well, it could certainly be worse for this time of the year. Well, let's hope that ugly snow doesn't rear its head for at least a few more weeks. That wraps it up for another week in Bin News. Thank you for tuning in. Take care, and we will see you next time.